So I've just watched uh, Professor Anton's video about the philosopher George Simmel um, and some of his ideas uh, on um, culture and our moment in history when um, culture has really become uh, a commodity and is being produced and reproduced at um, industrial rates uh, of efficiency and, t and now even electronic rates of efficiency um, and at these great speeds of cultural innovation that really culture itself seems to evaporate. Um, we no longer have roots in, um, in the past. You know, each generation grows up in an entirely different world than even its, its, its parents and even the, the, the one once removed uh, past generation. Um, so we don't, not, not, not only do we not have, um, you know, national, a national heritage and a sense of national consciousness in any genuine way, um, at least in America and probably most of Western, Western Europe, but probably mostly in America. Um, so not, not only do we not have that national, uh, inheritance, but, um, we've lost our own parents. Most marriages end in divorce, you know, so we're so culturally uprooted um, nowadays that indeed there is a crisis of culture. Now, um, all that said, you know, I'm largely in agreement about the importance of these ideas, but I, I would ask um, Corey, and as a serious question that I'm, I'm genuinely curious about, what, what is it that we can learn from Simmel that we can't learn from um, from Hegel, because I, you know, I, I hear Hegel's phenomenology of spirit echoing in every sentence that, that you um, offered us about Simmel, uh, Simmel's philosophy. Um, you know, this idea, this brilliant insight that really not, not only Hegel, but the whole German idealist um, school of thought, you know, running from Kant. Uh, to Fichte and then Schelling and Hegel uh, carrying it forward each in their own unique ways. Um, this idea that consciousness and the universe or spirit and matter or freedom, the freedom of the subject and um, the givenness and necessity of the object um, their, their realization that these two always emerge and evolve together, I think, um, offers us a wholly unrealized trajectory, a trajectory that was um, given over historically as the modern West adopted the Cartesian um, ontology or the Cartesian, the Cartesian world picture where matter and mind, spirit and, and matter are separate substances that interact only through uh, the will of God. You know, in other words, that one has to just give oneself over to an unprovable belief in um, an infinite architect who is able through some unknown power uh, connect the ideas of our mind with the, the world in itself. Because otherwise, you know, from a Cartesian perspective, there really is no coherent way of explaining the communication of soul and body. One can only say that, well, God does it. And, you know, this Cartesian way of thinking has, has won out. And it's directly related to the sort of techno-industrial capitalist mindset and... and um, Praxis. It's both a, a theory and a, and a practice um, that that we've come to find ourselves immersed within. Um, we look back to Descartes if we hope to understand our situation. I think you know, even natural science, which you know uh, officially calls itself materialist and even increasingly atheist, um, that natural scientific picture has only adopted. Um, one side of Descartes' dualism, and it tries to, you know, through neuroscience, um, as expressed, you know, by people like um, 
uh, um, Francis Crick, uh, who went into neuroscience after being um, a geneticist for a while, uh, people like Daniel Dennett, a philosopher of, of neuroscience, um, these sorts of materialists, while they explicitly on the surface deny Descartes, um, deny a dualism, they, they end up having to call consciousness an illusion and still something which exists separate from the material world that has no influence upon the material world. And so, you know, they end up uh, reaffirming the very dualism that they pretend to be denying. So, somehow we've got to understand culture and consciousness or material and uh, or objective and subjective culture as Corey was describing it. We've got to understand them as part of a single process um, such that culture isn't unnatural. You know, human consciousness isn't something entirely irreconcilable with or con uh, in some way continuous with nature, but um, nature itself is in the business of making consciousness, of, of in fact becoming conscious. So part of our crisis, I think, is, is the natural, the ecological crisis and not just the cultural crisis. We are existing on a planet of finite resources and our symbolic systems, principally money today, that's the lifeblood of the techno-industrial capitalist uh, cultural system. Money as a symbol set is so detached from the material conditions it's supposed to represent that it is systematically destroying those material conditions. Um, the earth has a disease and it's called capitalism. Certainly though, you know, life itself is a disease. Capitalism itself is a living um, spiritual organism that has uh, become the dominant species in, in uh, amidst human cultural entities, human minds. So it, it, in some sense, you know, it's real and in that, in that sense true. Capitalism can't really be um, dismissed as an illusion, right? You can't say that the people who interact within that system, which includes you and me and every Marxist who ever wrote a word in, in Western academic, in, uh, you know, inscribed a word into Western academic discourse, all of us are caught up within the capitalist way of life. We, we wouldn't be able to eat um, or speak to one another through these forms of media without that capitalist enterprise, without being ourselves capitalists, owners of capital. Um, so it's a very strange situation that we find ourselves in, having to critique the very thing that makes our own thought possible. But that's what we have to do. Um, and somehow these technologies, these forms of media, are uh, altering our consciousness, especially those of us um, who actually participate So, I'm not sure what's happening to us as we engage in this process of planetary communication, sharing face time with each other. But um, it certainly is weird, isn't it? I hope it leads us into a future. You know, the future has become an increasingly endangered idea for our species. I think, you know, YouTube is presenting us with an opportunity to reimagine the future um, by, by learning to talk differently about the present. But it's no guarantee. Um, anyways, thanks, Corey, for your thoughts, and um, I hope to, to hear back to you about, you know, these questions about uh, Simmel's relationship to Hegel, what Simmel might add to Hegel. 
um, because you know I'm, I'm sure that there are ways that Simul is able to see beyond Hegel, but but maybe not. Um, I'm just curious to hear your uh, opinion on that matter. But uh, anyways, thanks for listening.